Good morning, folks. It's been 12 hours since we launched the Kickstarter campaign for the Disaster Prediction app, and wow, are you guys flexing your muscle. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's start here. This is the last three days of solar flaring from GOES. We're clearly in an uptick due to current planetary alignments, but as even M-class flares are a struggle to get, we can say that even the upticks in solar activity now are indicative of our star slipping into a grand minimum. When we come to spaceweathernews.com, we see that the Earth-facing quiet is really driving that lack of activity, as the limbs and far side do remain active. This is the sunspot that gave us the flares over the last week, but now that it has escaped Earth's view, it released a powerful CME that disrupted the heliosphere and will surge the quake watch even higher than it was already heading. Due to Mercury and Saturn heliocentrically conjoining today, the incoming northern hole, dark up there, and the recent low point in sunspot number, the quake watch has been on the rise. Now, with the heliospheric disruption as well, we could see some significant seismic events in the next two, two and a half days or so. More on that in a moment. We'll take a look at the last 24 hours of the Earth-facing disk and see a small filament release on the northeastern quadrant, up there top left. This may have produced some ejecta, but due to its size, will not be significantly geo-effective. Let's put our filament focus actually a bit south of that. Two ropes coming over the southeastern limb there. And let's come back up north as well to the limb, find a much larger structure up here. Multiple solar tornadoes involved, and at least 100,000 kilometers of plasma dancing in. Perhaps the biggest space weather story the last day is the solar wind speed surging over 700 kilometers per second due to that coronal hole down south. Level 2 global magnetic storms with localized level 3 events have caused an increase in both electrical fires and airline incident reports over the last day. Should be waning now though, solar wind is calming. The Indonesian island chain usually has a lot of OLR anomalies around, but the positive anomaly in northern Australia made a huge gradient of outward thermal flow compared to the islands to the north, and the top quake of the day was a six-pointer that struck that gradient line almost exactly. Even when the OLR updated yesterday evening, the positive anomaly appears even more directly south of the tremor. Remember the uptick set to surge even more this weekend. Top news today includes confirmation of harm from even low-dose contamination and pollutants. Studies specifically showed the damage is to our brains. A bit more along our usual route is an article about a new type of gamma source in the heavens. Powerful binaries close enough to have major solar wind interactions actually produce these gamma energies where the shock waves interact. And last but not least, we launched the Disaster Prediction app on Kickstarter. Dr. Kong Papu Yen and I are teaming up to bring multiple models of disaster forecasting into one place and have the most pertinent information sent right to our mobile devices. It's been just 12 hours and you guys are so impressive. Truly humbling experience for me to sit here and realize that there are people out there who either care about this specific work or appreciate the daily efforts or whatever. It is just humbling. And I thank you so much for supporting us. You can find the links on this page and on all of our websites. It's 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time and we'll close with our Kickstarter video, which you may have already seen. But if you haven't, please stick around a bit longer and know that we really need your help. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Over the last five years, the observers have grown from a grassroots movement to a force of more than a quarter million enthusiasts. Our brand is consistency. When we stand, we deliver. Now our years of work is reaching a culmination. The theories took shape. We tested them statistically and qualitatively. We verified the models thereafter. Now it's time to make them useful. Many of you know me. I'm Ben Davidson, founder of Space Weather News, the Mobile Observatory Project, and the Suspicious Observers. Every day since 2011, we've put out our space weather video updates, 1,600 days in a row and counting, including holidays, weekends, pretty much every day the sun comes up. Our primary research was a collaboration with the Statistical Consulting Service at The Ohio State University, and it resulted in the first multi-decade statistical demonstration of solar-triggered megaquakes. The magnetic fields in focus in that article are tied to solar phenomenon called coronal holes, and now we can use near-real-time solar data to tell when the Earth is likely to shake. Hello, everybody. 
My name is Kong Pop Yu Yen. I am an electrical engineer and independent space weather researcher. Dr. Kong Pop Yu Yen has been working on a similar model using sunspots. He has had similar success in demonstration and subsequent verification, and we find that his model very much complements our work on coronal holes. We have been refining these models for years. Now it is time to put them to good use. Using these and other solar and planetary factors, we're in the process of developing a mobile application built to warn of imminent natural disasters. Just like a weather or earthquake app can notify you of events and send warnings, now the forecasting aspect can be applied to earthquakes, and those warnings can come right to your phone. Ben and I have been observing space and solar activity for several years daily, trying to find ways to predict natural disaster and we came to the same conclusion that natural disaster have various triggers and precursors therefore natural disaster can be predictable if we know where to look for clues this isn't just another app. This can actually do some real good. We've long discussed how the end goal of our research was to someday save lives. This is the first and best chance the world has seen. Now Kong Pop and I are going to be at the helm driving the creation of this app, but it is a complex process and, just like with the mobile observatory, the observers need to flex their muscle in order to deliver this program to the world, and that's why we are here. We need about $35,000 to bring the app to market and begin the process of pushing disaster notifications. Our Kickstarter campaign will run for 20 days, and after that it will be a matter of months until we are ready to approach the marketplace. Unlike the Mobile Observatory project, this is personally interactive with everyone anywhere in the world, and the app itself can have direct and significant effects on people's lives. So besides the satisfaction of contributing to something real, something important, Kong and I figured that those willing to support this effort should be rewarded. We have a number of rewards for supporters, including first crack at the app, t-shirts, hoodies, and personal time with myself and Billy Yelverton from our Electricity and Plasma Lab. We have the chance to do something meaningful and fulfill the purpose and spirit of these years of focused analysis. Let's break new ground. Let's make this warning system happen. Let's take a step down the road to saving lives. Please remember that the goal here is to save lives. And this is a step in the right direction. With your help and support through Kickstarter, we will make this project happen. Thank you.